All right, so we're back and we're still at Serrano, sort of the second phase here. I've been waiting for some more supplies to come in, but from what I can see so far, there isn't really much else to do than just sort of stick to the tactics that we've had. So just while I was off camera, I, uh, let me just get manual control here. I did basically launch another missile. Where did that go? I can't see it from where I am now. It's possible that that actually got shot down, but since we have now scanned everything, I sort of have an idea of where the anti-air units are and the standard units. Is there a unit in here that I missed? No, this looks... doesn't look like it. Um, there's still an anti-air unit over here, but I need to wait for it to get out of the water before we can actually take it out. Then we can cycle to the gun and see if we can do something about this. Um, so the thing is that while I do have some supplies coming in, it's about to make its way into the water again, which is going to be a problem. This is just in the wrong p position for this, really. Uh, somehow we managed to miss the unit we were actually trying to take out. Um, but it's got very little health left. I think using... Something else that I'm thinking of now, using chain guns, or the auto cannons as they're called in the game, I don't think that's going to work because we need to get too close. Or, well, we already know it's not going to work because we need to get too close. But it's possible that there could be other, like, if we just use standard missiles instead, we can use to mop up. And I haven't tried that just yet. So this one's currently outfitted with torpedoes. This one has a combination. Uh, let's take the one that has torpedoes and we will just get some... That's anti-air. IR missiles. Are the IR ones the standard ones? I haven't really been using these. I think that they are. Um, so we'll just fit these instead. Now, my assumption that I'm making here is that we can get close enough to the units to be able to fire off missiles, but before they can actually fire back. So that's what we're going to try here. We're just going to need to wait a little while for that to get outfitted. Now, at the same time, because I've waited for a little bit, this barge has showed up. We can see what it's unloaded here. So now we have a heavy cannon and we have some artillery guns, both of which we can use because we have a lot of ammo. Um, now, the one I want to try first is actually, because I don't have a lot of these Walrus units, I only have the one, I want to start... What do we have here? That's 40 mil. Oh, actually, that's too bad. This can't actually take the artillery gun, so I'm guessing what we need are the bear units. Let's just see. This is Walrus. The bear is, is the really big one. Okay, so this is useful information as well. Let's see if we can produce those. So if this is where we get our surface chassis. No, we can't. All right, so this is another thing then which we'll need to figure out production for. That'll unlock bear. So will that. Well, any of these really. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Or we can make our way up here, but that doesn't unlock anything for us. So it has to be one of these. Um, let's see how tough they'll be to take out. I mean, this one's our best bet, but it's again directly next to a four shield island. No easy answers here. Uh, I mean, at some point we will have to take down a four shield island, but we are kind of in a situation where it's not particularly easy for us to do that. This one doesn't unlock it, which is too bad. And I kind of feel like if we could go up to one of these, uh, it would be it would be better because we have to head up here anyway. Uh, we want to go and capture some of these islands, as we saw in the previous episode. I kind of feel like we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, Let's sort out this island for now. I mean, I'm really only taking this island because we'd already started engaging the units. Um, we can get fuel here as well. But uh, let's see if we can actually get this thing airborne. 
Like, has it sorted out its ammunition? Yeah, so it's got four, which will help us to take out probably two anti-air units, depending on how much health they still have left. So we'll just get it over here. Let's give it a bit more altitude, like 700. It's a good start. How's this one doing on fuel? 51%. I'll leave it out for a bit longer. Let me see, is there anything else that we need to go and pick up in terms of supplies? Where do we have orders? We still have two of these heavy cannons. That should come. Gimbal cameras, where are these stored? Radars. Pyrus modules, okay. Oh, but these are already... No, they're not in transits already. So we still need to send barges out to go and collect them. So, okay, so the there should be some of them over here. Yeah, we have the heavy cannons over there. So send a waypoint to go and collect that. Oh, and these, I guess, are still getting picked up by that barge. So that's okay. So that's logistics sorted out for now. And... Do we have this aircraft up? That's the albatross. That's the barge. Oh, here we go. We're just going to take direct control from here. So we'll activate one of these. Actually, I can use the gimbal camera to fire off these as well if I wanted to. Let's have a look. So that's the anti-air unit. Um, recycle the weapons. Oh, of course, I can't use the gimbal camera for this particular missile. That that one I actually do need to take control here. So, got manual control. Now the question is, how close are we going to need to get? Actually, I don't know why I'm thinking this would work, because wouldn't it just shoot down these as well? Maybe if I fire off multiple at the same time? How do I lock the target? Okay, so we'll fire two there. and see if we can actually take that out. I don't know why it seems to be flying in the wrong direction. Unless I'm using the wrong kind of missile for this. It did hit something, but I'm not sure, not quite sure what happened there. Do manual control again. Just fire. Now again it is... It seems to be heading for a different target. We need a different we need a different setup here to get this one back. I really don't want it to shoot down this weapon though, so I I do hope that it doesn't fly too low. Because those anti-air units will take it out in no time. Um, okay, so that's not an option. I don't like the sound of that. Vehicle destroyed, we just lost it. It's exactly what I was afraid of. It's okay, we can build more. Do we have more? No. Let's build two more. Aerial chassis. This is the closest. It's a thousand each. They're not cheap. But it could be worse. It didn't have any weapons on it, at least. Um, so... Put in an order for these as well. This is why you've got to be careful, because I'm sure as soon as I sent it off to come back, it would have started reducing its altitude. And that's unfortunately where the issue came in as well. Okay, so hopefully those will finish producing by the time the barge gets there. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, 
so that we can at least replace that. We don't want to lose this one as well, for sure. Um, because we need one that can do the pickups. What else can we do here? Uh, it would have been great if I had some, some Mantas. We have the Albatross. That can only take two weapons at a time. We've taken out so many units already. Uh, let's see what else we can do with the carrier gun for now. I mean, it's expensive, but it is really effective. Assuming you're within range, of course. What do we have here? This is the anti-air unit that was almost taken out last time. He is within range now. He's on the move. Yeah, he is. But at least he's taken out. Do we have no anti-air there, so I'm not going to care about that for now. Those units are just out of range of where I am right now. Do we have any anti-air over here? No, these guys are fine. That's anti-air. Out of range, unfortunately. I think that may be the last anti-air. If they're not moving, which they don't seem to be, let's try something else here. We're going to use the missiles. How is... Oh, sorry. I, I shifted to the gun again. Carrier missile. That's what I want. So I've just fired off multiple, I think. No, wait, I just fired one. That's the second one. We'll get a third. So the idea here is that uh, we'll overwhelm the anti-air. And they won't be able to shoot down all of the missiles. In fact, we're, we're going to shoot off a fourth here. Let's see if we can see them. Yeah, you can see them over on the side here, coming from the carrier. Unfortunately, though, these are also in the water, which is smart, because um, I don't know if the AI is doing that on purpose, but it's definitely going to make things harder for us. Now, what I've got to hope for is that it'll focus its attention on the first three that I fired and try to get rid of those so that I can get the, the fourth guided in for the kill. Uh, but it does seem to be making its way towards the water here, which is going to ruin that plan. The other thing that I can try to do is to build a ship that I can use to try and encounter some of these units on the coast. Okay, so it's starting to fire. It has taken out the first one, it seems. I think this is going to end up being the problem here, is that um, these are spaced too far apart, so this doesn't actually work. I can't believe how much of a nuisance these units are. Yeah, okay, so that didn't work. Um, and we need to bring this albatross back in. Well, we're going to stop taking that approach for now, and we're going to set up... Where is this one actually going to... We're going to set up another albatross. Sorry, this is not where I want to be. Set up another one here, and we'll put the camera on it just in case we need it. But primarily what I want are these light bombs. We are going to try to do bombing runs here. I've tried this once before, not successfully. We'll try it again. Now, unfortunately, the fact that they're in the water, um, I don't think bombs are going to work there either. 
And this is where having a unit that can take it on on ground or just another ship would be better. But building ships are expensive. So if we go over here, we can build Needlefish and we'll probably want to build one that's got a gun on it. That's 8,000. That's a huge investment. Especially considering that it can be taken out of a single torpedo. So it's not an investment that I want to make right now. But we will wait for this. No, wrong screen again. Uh, just to make sure that this is actually fully armed. It's still getting armored up and we want to make sure it's got all the armor it can take because the albatross isn't particularly tough. We're going to need to keep this quite high up to make sure that uh, it doesn't get shot down. And then we'll just take manual control. So this one will send it sort of roughly in this direction and get it up to about 1,300, which we have seen is generally safe here. I think we have the other one that's just touched down on deck, so it's going to take a little while for that to, to get out. Let's see how the logistics are doing. So, so far this bar just got 32 torpedoes. Do we still have more here? No, we've got all the torpedoes, but that's great. Good supply of torpedoes. There's still 160 mil shells here. Do we have an order for that selected? I don't think so. Where is that? So we have 20 in storage and we need to add these 20 to the to the order. And there's some utilities that's coming from there. So, okay, if that 20 is selected, uh, we need to update its waypoints. So just go there, back there first, then get this, then back to the carrier. Okay, that's fine. Air chassis, we have the two new petrol chassis built. And nothing in the inventory over here, so this is all good. I can only imagine how complicated it gets to take down four shield islands. Um, it's probably because I think we've sort of encountered everything there is. Maybe, you know, it could have some artillery, etc. But um, it's more a case of you can't just throw anything at it. You have to be really strategic about what you're sending out there. That's what makes it difficult. But it's interesting. This unit's just got anti-air on it. And I mean, the only other cannons that I can put on... So there's this turret, and I don't have the bigger turret, so it's not going to have much of an advantage. It has a little bit more armor, so it's at 20, whereas these units are at 10. Um, so it can take twice, twice the beating, I would think. Uh, but it's not enough against the number of units that we're up against. I could send another Razor Bull out to to start fighting against some of the units that aren't protected by anti-air. In fact, that may not be a bad idea considering that... Where are these auto cannons that we need? Let's get these fitted with auto cannons as well. If it does attract that um, that anti-air unit to a location where I can take it out of the carrier gun, it may be worth it. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is this is now loaded with bombs, which is great. So as soon as that's airborne, we're going to take control and see if we can take out that anti-air unit with a bomb. But as I said, considering its location, that it's still in the water, that may not work either. This could just be a little bit of practice in terms of how bombing runs work. So, connect. What's the altitude? We're still flying very low here. 
so I want to okay, we'll activate this bomb later on. I'm going to go into manual control, get a little bit of altitude going. And while we're doing that, let's see if we can see the drop location for the bomb. Supposedly, oh, there it is. You can actually see it. Okay, that's perfect. Let's get a little bit more altitude still. And we're going to make a turn towards the island here. Hopefully we're high enough now. Actually, let's just start bombing all the units that uh, we can realistically hit with a bomb. It is a small bomb. thing is, I can't switch over and look if this hits with the gimbal camera because I'm concerned that the AI will drop the altitude on this unit. And that's uh, that could result in it getting shot down. We've had enough shot enough stuff shot down for now. Uh, we are getting fired upon. Where is this anti-air unit? Is it that one? No. Okay, let's speed up a bit. Get some altitude. Oh, it's got to be one of those, right? I'm just going to drop this bomb in there. There we go. That is the anti-air unit. And we're gone. Well, <laughs> let's see. I think it hit. So we lost that albatross, but at least it did hit. Okay, so this is a huge learning for me. Um, Anti-air units, you can take them out of bombing runs, although obviously, and I knew this before I went in, don't, don't fly too low. Just keep the altitude above a thousand, it should be okay. Okay, but I think that is the last of the anti-air units, which means that now all of these units are going to be vulnerable to my razor bills. They won't be able to do anything about them. So we're just going to send one of these out. And I think that should be enough to take care of all of them. And do we still have... Let's just see. Can we replace... Okay, we have one more albatross. And this is going to be my bombing albatross, I guess. I'm not going to put a gimbal camera onto this one. I'm wasting these cameras and they're not that cheap. So this one will just have missiles. No, sorry, not missiles, bombs. No, I don't have a lot of bombs left. Okay, so we need to get some bomb production going now that we know these are actually useful. Uh, yeah, no camera, that's fine. Let's have a look. Uh, munitions, what's a bomb? Big munition? Yes, it is, and we can build heavy bombs, and those are probably the ones I want. If a heavy bomb... Oh, but the question is... What can drop a heavy bomb? Can it? Can this plane actually do that? So if I if I click on this, medium bomb, heavy bomb. Yes, it can. So then, why not just build the heavy ones? Why not just build the biggest ones you can? See how big the price difference really is here. That's twenty five. This is ten. I'm happy to go for the heavy bombs. Maybe we build 10 of these, the heavy ones, or even 20. Then we build 20 medium ones just as a backup. So 20 heavy, 20 medium. Put in the order for that as well. All right. And then we just need to get a barge out there. This one's still making its way back. This one as well. Uh, so whenever one of these finishes, we can go and pick up those bombs. This is this is really useful to know. Um, I think that Razor Bull should be airborne by now. All right, uh, activate the auto cannons, manual control, and we are off. Hopefully I didn't miss another unit. Um, 
These are always going to be vulnerable because they can always fire on you even without anti-air, but it's a lot harder for them to hit with the standard guns. So it's kind of worth it, considering these are about 750 credits to build. Autocannons aren't that expensive, and the ammunition that the autocannon uses is extremely plentiful and cheap to build. Um, just sort of scan here. It looks like those are the only units. Plus, I'd much rather have one of these being taken out than the heavy lift rotors. Those are more valuable. I could also fit one of those... Instead of even building these, I can just build the heavy lift rotors and fit them with four auto cannons. That would make them completely... Well, these things are pretty lethal already. Let's see if I can start hitting from this distance. And know something's firing at me that I haven't spotted yet. That looks like a cannon. This is not good. That could be anti-air. Doesn't look like anti-air. I would have been dead by now if it was. Three shield islands are a substantial step up. There's more turrets. They're like everywhere. I need to fire quickly before I potentially encounter some more anti-air. Okay, that one's done for. There's still a lot of stuff to clean up here. Okay, so that must have been more anti-air somewhere. wonder if it's time to start bringing in the, the ground units. I don't know how I missed so many of the ground defenses. Let's construct more razor balls as well. What's the price difference? This is 750, this one's a thousand. But wasting a heavy lift rotor just, yeah, doesn't seem like a good idea. We don't have a lot of money right now. In hindsight, it has totally not been worth it <laughs> trying to take out this island. We're spending way more than we're bringing in with these kills. So, the question is, do I want to send up, maybe do a couple more bombing runs? The other problem is that these turrets that are busy firing at me, they ground units aren't particularly good at taking them out. You are actually better off just getting, just looking at the bomb production over there. You are actually better off just taking them out of the auto cannons as well. Um, but it, it must just be that I've missed some anti-air units somewhere. And that's what's causing the issue. Which means that I have to, once again, get some recon going. Um, let's get down to 2 kilometers zoom. Why do I feel like the carrier has moved from the position that it used to be in, or am I just imagining things? I don't know. Get a little bit closer, get it up to the standard height. Okay, so this is one of the barges making its way back. We've really sacrificed a lot of air units here. So this barge is busy unloading, the other one will just about do that now as well. This is a really deep game though, I mean there is so much strategy to it um, and I think when you initially look at it on the Steam Store page it's just not clear what it's about and, and why it is so good but it is completely worth getting. I mean I'm sure that if you've watched this series until this episode you probably know that by now but uh, yeah it's a lot of fun. Although I will say and I've said this many times the tutorial falls well short of explaining the mechanics and there's a lot of tooltips and stuff needed. I was just thinking the fact that 
you can't really see what the ranges of any of the weapons are, at least in this build of the game. Uh, it's a big miss as well. But maybe something that'll get fixed eventually. Okay, let's go and have a look now what we've missed as we're heading up here. This is in tracking mode. I wonder if if the flares would actually help in identifying all of these turrets that we couldn't see. I, uh, I said in the previous episode that I think flares are kind of useless and I've not been able to prove otherwise just yet, but maybe I am wrong. Maybe we should try them. Where are the flares? That is the alarm. This is... This is flare launcher. Okay, so... We'll fire one from this albatross, I guess. If we can. So, control this again. Cycle weapon to carrier flare. And then we'll just fire one off. We only have 10. If it helps us to... Oh, there's one. I mean, that wasn't specifically the flare that helped me, but, but that's the turret. Let me see what kind it is. It's a missile turret, okay. So that could easily take out an air unit. Is that the flare? It's taking a while to get here. We really have to watch carefully here for what we could have potentially missed. Those units I must have tagged already. Actually, when I identified that turret, where is it now? I should have just taken a shot at it. I don't know if it would be in range of the carrier or not, but... Yeah, I may be missing something here. Um, I have a radar unit. If this radar unit can help us identify stuff that we haven't been able to tag before, that could be a big advantage. We also have the ability to build the, the AWACS radar, but I don't have anything that can carry that right now. You need the Mantis to carry that, which we don't have the ability to build that. Let's have a look if this radar tells us anything else about it. We have to look at the production facility, which is here. So there is standard radar. Detects air and sea vehicles within 10 kilometers, which should cover the entire island, I would think. So let's see if that helps at all. Well, it doesn't seem to flag... It doesn't seem to flag the, uh, the turrets, which is the issue right now. So we have no easy way of spotting those. I'm almost considering leaving this island and coming back. It's just, I think what's going on here is a bit of a sunk cost fallacy. Like I've put so much effort into taking stuff out on this island or already that I, I kind of just don't want to give up. But I do need to figure out how to identify all of those turrets. And unfortunately, if I want to get the bigger ground units like the bear units, which would really help in this scenario. Um, that's not going to be easy either. I'm going to have to go through a similar process. But we've got to, got to break it down one problem at a time. And right now, the problem that I'm facing is I don't know where the turrets are. And some of them are potentially really dangerous. So I need to find them first and then I can do something about it. I mean, another option, of course, would just be to 
try and make a break for it and, and capture capture this, but I don't think, I think there's, we're going to face too much resistance on the way in. Um, let's, okay, we'll fire another flare, and then we're going to fire the carrier gun at this. It's going to be in a weird angle as soon as I switch. Uh, carrier gun. No, that's out of range. So, carrier missile. It'll have to be that. This one may actually hit because this turret is not... Um, it fires missiles itself and I don't think that, that can take out other missiles, so we may be okay here. If we just keep it locked on here. But again, it's, uh, this would be so much easier when you have two or three players because you can have one person doing this and somebody else controlling the ground units. Uh, coordination would be in incredibly helpful here. And it's entirely possible to do it in single player. It's just a lot of stuff to keep track of. And the biggest issue, and I hope they find a way to fix this, is that I can't let go of tracking this missile right now. I mean, in this case, technically I could. I just want to make sure that it hits its target because I don't need to guide it because it's a stationary target. But in all other cases, you have to stay in this view. And as soon as you leave, you lose your ability to keep tracking. I would really love a bot of some kind in this. I'm just going to stop the guy and stop the support here because I don't want to get myself into a position where I can't actually guide this in, so we'll just follow it like this and see if it hits its target. So that looks like a hit. Um, I'm assuming that it is taken out. I can't tell for sure because it's a little bit far away. But we still have a bunch of other stuff here which we haven't taken out. It's just we're just going to use carrier missiles for these as well. This doesn't have um, doesn't have anti-air. I'm not going to guide it. I'm just going to hope that they don't move. Then we're going to move the carrier in closer. I think we've dealt with enough of the enemies. That'll give us more range on the carrier gun. So where are we here? Uh, we are actually pretty far away. We haven't even reached the shallow waters of this island. We're still in the shallow water of, waters of the island next to it. And that's probably why there are so many locations where the carrier gun can't hit. By the way, you may hear some thunder in the background. That's not Carrier Command 2. Yeah, so we'll move in quite a bit closer here. What am I looking at on this screen? What's the purple? I have no idea. I don't want to get so close that units start getting into the water and taking shots at my carrier, but I think, I can't remember if these anti-air guns can take care of ground units as well. Here you can see the missile going in. I'm not sure if that's going to hit anything or not, but uh, we're not going to check right now. Should probably tell us over there on that screen. So we can go go and have a look once we get the carrier into the position that we want it. Um, let's see how close we actually are here. So we're getting very close actually. I want to get right up to it, maybe like 2,000 meters. Is 
it still doesn't necessarily solve the original problem of not knowing where all the turrets are. But uh, maybe I can get a ground unit out to scout. Okay, so we'll just park here. I think this is good enough. And take another look from here. This fog really isn't helping. So that's where we need to be. Well, all the tagged units appear to be gone. There's definitely no aircraft left. Oh, you can see something hit there. There's the smoke. So that must be the previous carrier missile that we fired. I think we've probably just got to go for it now. And if we encounter anything, we have the carrier gun to back up. There's still enough fuel left in this to, to stay up in the air. I'm not going to send this out. But we'll send a bunch of these units out in a group. They'll just have to make their way over here. So, I mean, if they don't make it, we'll rebuild them, I guess. Not the most expensive. They're about 500 each, I think. But we'll just get all of them sort of around this general location. These are also base installations, and it's possible that some of those will have their own turrets as well. If we see them, we'll just take them out of the carrier gun. Okay, and then there's the virus bots themselves. And that's the one that I really don't want to get destroyed, because otherwise we can't take the island. Um, we'll need to order more seals then before we can. But we're going for this, so we may as well just try. So the only surface unit we're not deploying is the one that... Uh, it's this one that has the anti-air cannon on it. I may as well have just outfitted this with a standard cannon, but the thing is, unlike the seals, this travels a little bit slower in the water and it's already slow enough as it is, so we're not going to do that right now. Um, I may want to recall the radar unit, because if it's not detecting anything else, there's no real, real point for it being out there. Where is it though? Did I lose that unit? No. It's over here. It's actually quite far. It's a good idea to start getting this back. Um, and actually, since the barges have unloaded everything they needed to, so what do we have here? Heavy cannon, we have, nice, we have new chassis for petrol, torpedo, gimbal cameras, heavy cannon, whole bunch of stuff. Um, and send one of these off to go and pick up this. And then we'll go back to see how these are getting on. Let's see if we have better visibility now. No, it's still terrible. Really not good. So where's the carrier? So this is where the carrier is right now. So that's us. We can see some of these units making their way over. And we'll just have to keep an eye on them. Biggest problem would be is if there were turrets up here, which, as I said, I, I don't think there are. We would have been able to spot them.
And it's kind of easy to spot them in the bases because you expect that they'll be there, but the ones that are just sort of randomly placed in other locations, I just don't know if there's any easy way to spot those. Other than flying low enough that they can actually start firing at you, which is fine if it's just a normal turret, but a huge problem if it's anti-air. So far, not seeing anything. Still taking a little while. These units to get onto land, but as soon as they get onto land, they should be able to move a bit faster. In terms of the overall strategy of this campaign, I think we're in a good place. There's a lot of stuff that we can produce. Biggest problems that we don't have, I guess the bear units, like the heavy, heavy ground unit, and uh, we also don't have the Mantis, which is the faster aircraft, carries its own radar as well. I don't know how essential the Mantis really is. It's pretty clear that we can do bombing runs without it. But uh, I don't know what we'll need when we take on the enemy carrier. Okay, now the visibility is better, so now we may be able to spot some stuff that we haven't been able to before. It just feels like there was so much more... I had so much more stuff shooting at me when I was flying in with the Razor Bull. And I can't spot anything from here. And it seems that the snowy islands are definitely the ones that are more difficult to spot stuff on. I'll just go out here and check. Where are our units? They are getting close. In fact, I'm going to take direct control of this first one. I should really have a camera mounted on one of these. I, so I'm just sitting on board with the camera. Well, actually, let me take direct control of the gun because at least that way I can look around. I just want to see where the actual radar base is. What I'm concerned about is that over there somewhere there could be more turrets. And as I've said, like one of these SEAL units, you probably need a couple of them, like two or three, to take one out. I, I can't remember because I never really do it. I prefer not to try and take on turrets with these units when I can just take them out with razor bills instead. Uh, why is he getting so close to the edge? Don't do that. I'm just going to take manual control of the driving. And try to get it towards the space. Because right now it's all about the exploration, it's just making sure that we can actually get to the location. If we can, we can drop the virus bots and we're good. We won't be airlifting these units out because uh, it'll take the same amount of time for one of them to make its way back than it will for the petrol to do back and forth trips and dropping them off. So we may as well just send all of them back. Okay, let's see. Still a little ways to go. These two are taking a different route to the ones at the top. Let's see what this one can see. May get a little bit closer to something else here. And that's the virus bots unit, so he's right behind. This unit's going to start complaining about fuel soon. I still do want to keep it out here. It's still on 40%, which is enough. And like I said, as soon as we see... Oh, wait, we are seeing fire being exchanged, and that's what it is. So uh, we're going to use the carrier gun. I need to switch weapons here. And we're going to fire. This is a big problem. It doesn't have power, shit. 
That was a big oversight. I needed to switch on this breaker again. Okay. It's going to take out all of my units if I do not do this quickly. Okay, back and fire. Come on. Okay, that's, that's it gone. But it did take out another one of my units, and that may have been the virus bots. How did I miss that? I have no idea how I wasn't able to spot that turret. Oh no, we still have the virus bots. That's, that's great. Oh, but it is being fired upon. Shit, from where? Something over here. Is it this one? Can't tell if there's more than one. Question is, will this... Oh, there's more units coming from here. Or is that us? No, that's us. Did it make it? I think it survived. So having a turret there in those trees, there's, just, there's no way I would have spotted that. If you do happen to be watching this and you're super experienced in carrier command, um, if you have any tips for how to track turrets, that would be great. Uh, but I think finally now we're in a position where we can actually use this thing. This barely pulled through. Like we... We just just made this. I'm almost scared to move in close to this on the off chance that there is another turret here that I've missed, but the problem is at this distance it will... Uh, there's really not much point here. I. Um, I can't use the carrier gun anyway because I'll take out my own unit. Which, when I started playing the game for the first time, I did actually successfully blow up my own units through fr friendly fire. That's very easy to do with the carrier gun because of the high amount of splash damage. Um, so we're just going to drop these off right here. That should be close enough. And then I just want to get this out. so that it doesn't struggle with the pathfinding on the way back. That is something that still happens with the AI. I know people complain about it, and it's really not that bad, but it does happen from time to time. So, all right. I think this is far enough out. So now we can just uh, get all of these units back. I think ultimately it was the right decision to send in the ground units. Um, even though we did lose some, I would not have been able to spot those turrets without it, so... But yeah, still still a lot of stuff to learn when it comes to the higher tier islands, and the best advice I can give right now is don't try to take them if you don't need to. Because it, it does take a lot of resources. You're more likely to break even on the lower tier islands. I think on the higher tier islands, there's a very good chance that you're going to sustain heavy losses, and it's going to cost you more credits. Definitely in the short term, but possibly even over the course of the campaign, if I think about just how much I've had to throw at this. Especially once you start using that carrier gun, because it's so expensive. But I mean, of course, I, I lost a lot of units as well. This albatross can come back in as well. So... Just have a look here. How am I doing on fuel, by the way? It's been a while since I checked that. Okay, there's a whole different problem here. My carrier is up to 95% capacity, uh, which means that I can't stock a whole lot more. This is a whole different kind of problem. So it means that once I bring in these bombs and things, I don't think there's any way around that. Hmm. Okay, so now we have another fuel island. This is the first three shield island. Let's see how much we get for this. Captured island, 800. I can't remember how much we get for the other ones. Are we getting more because this is a three shield island? I'm not sure. But um, 
Well, because of all of the islands that we control, we get quite a bit of income just from island control. But as I said, like we 800, we spent way more than that taking this. I know we get some money for all the units that we've taken out. We'll also get more money because we have this island in our control now, but still not sure if it was ultimately worth it. So while these units are making their way back in, I'm going to do some planning and figure out what is going to make the most sense now. Uh, but let's first figure out, so stuff that I need, air chassis would be good if we can build the Manta. That is too far and too many islands in between, um, although likely also the only one that I can actually get within a reasonable amount of time, but we're a long ways off that. Up here, this will allow us to build more turrets that we currently can't. We don't need another fuel island. We don't need another barge island. Um, more munitions could be good, especially the 40 mil ca cannon as well. Then there is... There's more, yeah. I think this is really the one we wanted. Although right now we don't have a shortage of these munitions. The bigger problem is actually that we can't use them because we don't have the bear unit. And to get that, we... It's no easy way to get that. So as much as I'd like to head up here, like this is, this is great, like if we can produce these munitions but it doesn't solve the longer term problem, or well, the immediate problem really, of being able to build the ground units that can actually deploy those. This is the island we need. And this is gonna be another tough island to take, but I think it's one that we're gonna to have to, any one of these three islands really, is what we should be taking next. And the easiest one to take is magma. But it's not clear what the easiest way is going to be. So I, I definitely do SI. I want to completely avoid this. Which means probably coming in, taking this one from the southern side to avoid the insane navy that I assume is going to be hanging around this island. Then coming in and taking this one for the aerial chassis and then going in for magma. That seems to be the only sensible option here. Where is the... I think he's still far enough away that I'm not worried about the enemy for right now. But being able to produce those bare ground units, that's a big deal to me. Um, so I think that's what we want to do next. So it's going to be quite a trip over here. Uh, there's just one other thing I want to check. Um, what, what else are we going to get if we go this route? So... We take this one, we get a blueprint unlocked. This is an air chassis that we do need. Actually, this makes a lot of sense. So strategically, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna head down to this island, take that one, take this one as well, while avoiding this at all costs. And uh, that should make sense. to see how far these guys are from coming back. Okay, so they're just about back here. Uh, a lot of stuff that needs to get fixed. Um, a lot of ground units that we lost. So how many do we actually have left? So four of them are going to come back on, which means that we're going to have two open slots. I'm going to have a quick look at the supplies here. So oh, we do still have some extra seal units, so we can start outfitting those. Um, I'll just put them in here. I don't know if that's going to cause an issue. It shouldn't. And we'll get them loaded up with some weapons. And hopefully that doesn't cause an issue for the others. I'm assuming they can just slot into whatever free slots are currently available. So... But yeah, I'll let those come back and next time we'll start taking on this new series of islands. Uh, hopefully we won't get into too much naval combat there because that can be expensive. But as always, thanks for watching. If you do like this kind of content, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next video.